So uh, I'm very happy to uh, complete some information on uh, what uh, we discussed earlier today uh, during the conference, uh, in the institutional conference on the role of caveolins in cardiovascular diseases. And um, in fact, uh, these caveolins traditionally have been thought as uh, small invaginations of plasma membrane that are involved mostly in transcytosis, but also in other functions such as uh, cholesterol transport and metabolism. But more recently, the interest for these small structures comes from the fact that we know that they are enriched in signaling molecules so that these caveoli are hubs for signaling. You know, we, we're in an era where communication is very important. This is true at the cell level as well. And uh, the more we dig into caveoli, the more we find signaling proteins, including receptors, but also effectors and channels. And uh, all of these are organized uh, in the form of signaling platforms with reversible protein-protein interactions. So one of the key proteins within this caveoli is the caveolin, which, of which there exist three isoforms with specific tissue distribution and cell distribution, with caveolin 2 being ubiquitous, caveolin 1 mostly in endothelial cells and most other cells, except perhaps neurons, whereas muscle cells have caveolin 3 mostly. And uh, they exist as uh, homo-oligomers and they're associated with cavin to maintain the structure of the caveola. And uh, the interest for this comes from the fact that uh, interactions between caveolin and these effector molecules can be affected by changes in the abundance or the expression of caveolins and this has profound bearing on signaling and has uh, is emerging more and more as a new mechanism for pathophysiologic states of the cells. For example, in endothelial cells, changes in cavolin 1 abundance is implicated very clearly in endothelial dysfunction in states such as uh, hypercholesterolemia. And more recently, uh, a very exciting area is the involvement of caveole as sensors of mechanical stimuli, such as shear stress on the surface of endothelial cells, but also stretching of cells such as not only uh, endothelial cells, but also of myocytes. And very recent data show that uh, actually when you stretch a cell membrane with either a stylus to impose mechanical stretching or with a hyposmotic swelling uh, stimulus that uh, in cells that are devoid of caveolae, then these cells cannot support this stretching because their membrane rupture very readily. Whereas cells that retain the caveolae have some slack membrane that allows them to more easily sustain the stretching. And, um, and so, so this is a brand new concept that, uh, that really shows that regardless of uh, you know, integrin mediated signaling, just the, the physical folding of the membrane into caveolae serves as a reserve, if you will, of membrane to allow the cell to accommodate to stretching. But this can also be associated with specific signaling because during the stretching, there is a dissociation of the caveolin oligomers with this cavin 1 protein, and this also disorganizes the signaling hubs and this disorganization then has impinges on intracellular signaling. So this flattening out of the caveola is really a new way of signaling mechanical stress to the inside of the cell. And we think that ENOS is one of the uh, signaling mechanisms that responds to this stretching because in a circumstance where you have this flattening out of the caveola then Caveolin interaction with ENOS is disrupted and this activates ENOS to produce nitric oxide. So we think that this is a new facet of ENOS signaling in response to mechanical stress. And this actually uh, helps us to interpret some of the old data that we and others have generated showing that a cardiac myocyte that is stretched responds by producing nitric oxide that then influences EC coupling. And I think that this concept of flattening out of the membrane has even more potential pathophysiologic um, consequences because there is, a, as, as uh, you know very well, there is a 
very exciting current of research uh, looking towards the remodeling of T-tubular structures with cardiac disease. For example, in is chronic ischemia, there is a detubulization. This is also happening in heart failure. And the mechanism for this detubulization is not very well known. Um, and I think that uh, if you take into consideration that failing myocytes undergo stretching inevitably during remodeling and the um, increase in left ventricular volume, it's very likely that some of this flattening out of the caveole may be part of the uh, response to stretching the myocardium that then influences signaling through this dissociation of the caveolin complex. So this is an entirely new Re, uh, research direction uh, for which I think uh, we may discover more and more in the few months to come and years to come.